Hey there, Janko Redgas here for Cord Cutters, the show that brings you the future of television today. This episode is all about Simple TV, a new device that brings the DVR, the idea of the DVR, back for Cord Cutters. They uh, announced their service early this year at CS and they had a Kickstarter campaign this summer. Now they're getting finally ready to ship and we want to take a look at how well it actually works. So Simple TV is this device essentially, it's a $150 box that allows you to record over-the-air broadcast, the over-the-air signals that you can receive for free. And um, in addition to this $150, you also need to invest in a hard drive for it because it doesn't come with any internal storage. And if you want to use the service to the fullest, you need to subscribe to their programming guide, which is another $5 a month. So it's a little more, but it's still fairly affordable when you compare it to a TiVo subscription, for example, which runs $20 a month. But the question, of course, is, does it work? So this is it, the Simple TV unit. It's about the size of an Apple Time Machine, one of those backup devices, and kind of a similar design as well. Um, worth noting is it has a couple of LEDs right here for your functionality. Then let's take a look in the back at all the ports. We have power here. We have two Ethernet ports. You can loop it through, essentially. Here you connect your external hard drive. You need to connect storage to it. It doesn't have any hard drive in there. Then you connect your antenna. You can also do basic cable, unencrypted basic cable, but usually it works just as fine with a, with a home antenna. And you can also then have another antenna connection right here if you need to loop that through. Uh, you're going to say, where's HDMI? Well, it doesn't have HDMI because this is not meant to sit next to your TV, but anywhere in the house, next to your router probably. It also doesn't have Wi-Fi, you, so you want to plug it in via Ethernet. So you can put it next to your router, you can put it under the roof where you have the best uh, reception, but it's not a device that you stack on your phono, phono bank or like next to your TV. Simple TV at launch is available on two platforms. On the Roku, I have one right here. The app is firing up right now. And on the website, they have a web presence that you can access on your laptop or on your iPad or on your cell phone. On the go, as well as at home, so it also streams out of your home network if you're at the office or somewhere else. And the Roku box is, of course, to get all this stuff, the DVR functionality in the living room. Unfortunately, I found the experience lacking. It doesn't work very well at all at this point. I've been testing it for a couple of weeks. They've been pushing firmware updates and firmware updates, but it's still very rocky. In theory, you can watch live TV here. You can tune into any of the channels you receive with this over the air. So the big broadcasters watch these feeds live. You have a programming guide for that. And then you can access your recordings. Live TV, especially, I found very, very painful because you have to wait a long time until it changes channels. Uh, so I'm actually going to skip this because it is just too painful. I can't endure it one more time. Instead, I'm going to just show you how recordings look like on this device. So it's now loading this up. Essentially, I've recorded a bunch of shows over the last couple of weeks. You can set it to record a whole seasons of shows, kind of a little bit like TiVo, a little bit more rudimentary, but then you can access these recordings when it finally fires up here in the background. As you can see, it takes a long time. Part of that might be our office network. Part of it may just be because this device just doesn't like me, apparently, and it doesn't cooperate. Um, now it's retrieving the list of shows that I have here and all these shows are kind of, all these menus in the Roku uh, app of Simple TV are kind of the basic Roku UI style which I'm not the biggest fan of and it doesn't make it as easy to navigate through this but uh, let's take a look at a, sh at a recording of 30 Rock that I recently did just to give you an idea of how this looks like. Uh, it's now loading up, it's loading from the hard drive, streaming through the local network. Quality in theory should be pretty good. They're doing uh, multiple bit rates. I think the higher bit rate is like 5 Mbit or something. It should be HD quality. I found, however, in the, on the Roku app, it always looks kind of SD-like. We're going to see how, how much luck we have today. Let's see. It's finishing this up right now. And of course, if you compare this to a local DVR, cable box, much more instantaneous experience. But so this, it is not quite HD. Sometimes it takes a minute or so to scale up the quality a little bit. But um, this isn't all that satisfying. But essentially, you can then, you can pause the recording and can play again. And so the recording quality is 
gets better over time under best circumstances. But as I said, on the Roku app, I found it over a kind of lacking and not the best experience. So let's get out of it and let's take a look at how this looks like on the web because believe it or not, actually it works better on the web. This is the Simple TV website right here. On the iPad it looks similar, but I'm recording it on my computer right now. Essentially, you're seeing a list of the channels that are on right now here on the left for live television. And you see I am recording an episode of 30 Rock right now. If you want to tune into this while it's recording, we can do that right here. And it's firing up. Sometimes it takes a little second on the website as well. Uh, but there you go, you can watch it here, uh, minimize, you can, you can, I could blow up this now into full screen mode, of course, uh, why not, let's do this, we only get a part of it, but just gives you the idea, you can pause it, it's a DVR, so you can do all these kind of things. I could, in theory, change the channel as well and stop my recording, I have a whole bunch of other local channels. At my house, I get about 50 channels with this device, it depends really on where you are, and, uh, Aside from live, you have a guide here, a TV guide that helps you to schedule your future, future programming so you see what's on today or you can see what's on tomorrow. And, and then you can also search for shows by title and then schedule any of them to record as single episodes or whole seasons. And I've done this with a bunch of stuff as you can see in this tab that is my shows. It's a big mix of random stuff in a way. But uh, just give you an idea again here, The Cat in the Hat, one of my daughter's favorite shows. You see uh, I have 14 episodes recorded and I can watch any of these now, just stream them to my PC again. And uh, it's opening up after a second. And um, I can blow it up into full screen again if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go back now. And you also see there's future episodes and all kinds of stuff. There's a bunch of basic settings. Basically, they don't allow as much flexibility yet as a TiVo, where you can be very, very, you can, for example, the racing of the shows. TiVo is very good at saying, I want to keep this show forever. I want to keep just three episodes. I want to just keep it until I run out of space. This is still missing from this. Uh, it's, it's much more basic, and it just kind of tells you what kind of devices you have and what kind of uh, storage you have. So this is basically the website. As I said, uh, I found it to be working considerably better than the Roku app. Sometimes it doesn't work either. I, have, I ran into some issues just with the overall device when it's not available. But overall, the web experience is pretty okay. So this is Simple TV on the web as well as on the Roku device. I think it's an interesting device, has uh, potential in the future, but at this point I can't really recommend it to buy, especially if you want to buy it, if you want to get a DVR for your Roku box, it just isn't there yet and it's just too painful of an experience. If you want to stream to your iPad, maybe you can look at it, it's an interesting service for that. For the Roku I would say no, otherwise if you're overall interested in the space, DVRs for over-the-air television, I would say wait a couple months. Maybe they're going to improve this experience or maybe there's going to be other services out there that are going to be better.